Hello and welcome to a Maximum Power video. I'm Paul. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, Play Blackpool that uh, recently just came back from this weekend. Uh, you know, what we've got up to there. A uh, couple of buys, nothing major this time, which is good uh, for once. Um, but also just a, a little bit about, you know, general news that's going on in regards to, uh, you know, stuff going on with game. Um, and just leading on to a few things that I've noticed. Um, you know that they are doing um and just giving a bit of a view on it um and then just seeing you know where it goes from there um basically we'll start with uh play blackpool which was just uh saturday and sunday just gone i'm doing this on tuesday night um obviously great to catch up with a lot of people there um obviously saw phil jake and amy from the show um so it was good to obviously catch up with them um uh, saw uh jim bagley there showing off um you know, like the um, ZX Spectrum Next. Um, oh, God, who else? Um, Sean Holly from Tenpence Arcade. You know, he was helping with uh, um, the uh, Retro Games Party. James um, from from there, who does an amazing job. Brings a load of great um, cabs down. So I had a bit of a do on a dig dug, trying to get a little bit better at that because I just thought time to try and get, you know, stuck into one or two like classic arcade games i mean when i went to arcade club a couple of weeks ago i spent quite a bit of time playing uh crystal castles um and i just want to get good at like you know one particular game and um you know see if you can actually really get into it not never ever to get like you know a really high score but you know just to pick up for sort of like new little tips to you know improve and things i suppose like getting involved with um the you know challenges that uh ten pence arcade podcast does you know with their uh, high score every episode and things like that you know would help but no it was a great to obviously see them have a few drinks and stuff like that um have a look around the stalls this time there was still probably around the same sort of uh well amount of stalls as last year i think there was a couple more game stalls um because last year um there was just hardly anything i think it was like four or five stalls selling games as this time they still had you know stalls selling things like you know with bits of gaming merchandise so you know stuff like a little bit more quirky um to do with games like there was someone who had these uh, little um 3d printed uh cases where you can put a recipe pie in you know so it could be designed like an amiga or something like that um and i know that his store was quite popular you had uh alan's japanese gaming i can't remember the full title of his style but he's been coming to these events now for almost a year and he's like really popular on facebook and he just has so many um really well priced you know um saturn games dreamcast uh super famicom you know the works um so he's just got boxes upon boxes full of this stuff and it's great because like when he does uh, get the stuff and he puts it on facebook it's just like picture of his house just full of all these boxes and you know it'll put stuff to one side for you, you know when he gets to these events and he's trying to get uh to a lot more i think he's based up in glasgow um and then apart from him you've also got uh south on retro games so it's good to see lee there as well with a lot of his stuff you've got console passion you had um a, a few of us you know that uh recognize and everything like that um so yeah there were a few more stalls and stuff like bob wakeling was there as well uh, you know, like selling some of his uh, ocean art prints. So what you can just see, like the ones that I got years ago, the New Zealand Story and um, Rainbow Islands. You know, you can, it's good that you can still get those there, and you know, buy t-shirts and stuff like that with all his art. Um, inside the main hall, you had, um, like I say, the arcade games, pinball stuff like that. You had um, the stage was put in a different part this year. It was like put right down at the bottom of the room. Um, which then stopped this sort of like bottleneck happening um in the main room which has been a bit of an issue uh every year i've been i think this is the fourth time now um and there just seemed to be a lot more room you know it's no one banging into each other uh if you wanted to sort of be close to the arcade machines you could still you know congregate a little bit and not get in everyone's way um they had like again still all the old console stuff you still had obviously retro collect there doing the games challenges uh they had oh god what was it ridge racer revolution uh play that with a dance mat we all did absolutely awful 
at it. Um, actually, no, Chris Smith, um, not our Chris Smith, but another Chris Smith, friend of the show, um, he did really well with it. He, he managed his whole two foot technique with one foot accelerate and one foot steering. Who'd have thought, well, you know, with two feet? But yeah, I'm surprised him was absolutely awful at it. Um, obviously, great to see uh, Drisk and uh, Alan White from uh, IGDS as well, you know, catch up with them. Uh, and just, you know, seeing like a lot of people you only really see a couple of times a year. Um, so, it well, apart from that, they also had, you know, usual cosplay and um, a few uh, games as well. They had Bomb Man 2 tournament, um, I think like a FIFA 1 on day 2, and then you had some really good talks as well done by uh, the Retro Hour podcast, uh, Dan and Lavish. So, big uh, well done to them for uh, doing talks on day 1 anyway with, um, uh, God, who did they have? They had uh, David Pleasance, um, ex um Commodore who I spent a bit of time talking to on the Saturday night. They had um I can't think of his name at all. It'll come to me the uh ex ocean guy. God my brain's just absolutely gone at the moment. Um but yeah it was also good to see uh Mark Jones there as well. Um but yeah really really good uh good event. Um so what I'm gonna just do is let's say I only you know, got a couple of things I've was given to me um by one of the store holders, uh, give me his card, uh, a guy called Karim, and, well, I only really bought off his store anyway, I'm just showing you that, because he does like a lot of, um, printing, god, it's only over in Bury as well, so it's probably really close to, um, what's it called, um, Arcade Club as well, so it does like a lot of, uh, printing and stuff like that, um, and he was selling off quite a lot of his game collection, but what he does is this, so quite a few of these, like, he does some canvases, but also this was done on vinyl. And it is this really nice um, Zelda vinyl um, like wall thing. I don't really know what to class it as, really. Um, it made me think of the um, Bayo Tapestry, uh, obviously, the idea with that anyway. Um, Phil got one as well, and he handed that over to... Um, Amy from the show because obviously she obviously loves Zelda, um, but yeah, he, he showing him doing his designs on canvas. Um, he did like a few Street Fighter ones and things like that, and I just thought they were really really good. Um, I can't remember exactly how much he charges for these, but he said you know a bit of a freebie there, so I thought I had to give him a quick shout out because I really really liked it. And then just off his stall, like I said, not really uh, too much. Uh, picked up this game. It's called Crimson Tears uh, by Capcom, uh, a fighting game. So like a bit like, I suppose, well, when fighting games went to the 3D, you know, like Fighting Force and um, oh, what else, uh, the Bouncer and stuff. I can only really think of a few at the top of my head. I've never played this. This was £5, but that's not that bad. Um, a price complete as well. Really, really has been looked after. Um, and like I say, everything on his store was really well priced. You know, um, he had like a load of Amiga games, and ST, you know, mint condition and stuff. Um, he had, I think it was an Amiga 600, but just the uh, unit for 40 quid. Um, and then the other thing was uh, for a fiver, it's a free uh, magazine, so it was N64 Pro. Uh, one that I've never actually read because I never really bought um, N64 mags back then. This was from August 1998. There we are with Zelda on the cover there, some decent artwork. And then we've also got N64 magazine. This was issue 16 from June 98 with Banjo Kazooie and Gex on the cover there. Obviously, if I want to super play, um, and there's a fair few things in there. You know, it's like I said so many times before. Good to see um, these old magazines. What people were thinking of the games back then. There's one that I saw. I was flicking through it. Surely one of the worst rated games ever. Because I remember when it got. Uh, I'm sure it was on um, Super Nintendo as well. But Jeopardy there, nine percent. Absolutely awful. Um, and then finally was issue one of Sega Zone. Now, I remember this coming out. Uh, Sega Zone was, well, it was a magazine called Game Zone, first of all, which split into a Sega and Nintendo magazine, like Me Machines, 
but nowhere near as good. Uh, Sega's own, done by Dennis Publishing, so he had, I think it was Zero Magazine, then uh, Game Zone came out around the same time as Zero was starting to fade away to cover the console market, which was getting a lot bigger at the time. A few videos ago, I did um, a feature looking at Zero Magazine, and well, this is in really good condition as well for its age. Um, it's not got the James Pond boomerang, sadly. Um, not that I don't know what I'd do with it. Um, but it has got still, uh, where is it? The little booklet with eight page pull out game guide to, you know, different reviews and stuff like that. Um, just tell you what we think of different uh, games. So, what have we got here? Um, Doll Duck Dime Keeper, 4 out of 5 on the uh, Game Gear, for example. Um, and then there's a big review here for uh, Sonic 2. Well, I'm pretty sure it's a review. Um, what else? It might just actually be a preview there. Uh, review for, oh, hang on, what have we got? Speedball 2 on the last system. I'll have a quick look. 90% they gave that there. Hang on, there we go. Just zoom in a bit. Obviously, a fantastic game, you know, and um, yeah, it didn't really last too long. Um, Sega Zone, I think it only really lasted about 13 issues, um, maybe a little bit longer, but um, I don't recall it being around, you know, for too long. As I said so many times, like magazines still just faded away in like you know, uh, 93, 94, or a lot of them did. And then the one that came off uh, eBay a few weeks ago, I don't know, about a week ago, was that Games X, an issue of that. Um, and that was one of the final ones because it only went up to issue 48 weekly magazine I've mentioned this before um, covering consoles and you know their home computers back then around this time the OV8 bit stuff really was starting to fade away um, you know like it more or less hardly mentioned it at all um, still a fair bit of stuff you know on the consoles but I think even like Games X and UV needs to do a bit more, that's why it probably didn't last too much longer, especially at 75p an issue as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's it really from a play. Um, but yeah, always a good event, especially if you've not been to one before. Got to, you know, catch up with Pick uh, Kev Bayliss a bit there as well, who we've had on the show and now working over at Playtonic. So obviously we had a bit of a chat about uh, ukulele. Um, he bought a load of magazines as well, uh, some Zap64 ones that... Luckily, it wasn't one I was too bothered about. Um, but yeah, re really good to obviously catch up with everyone. Um, the other thing was a uh, massive thank you to everyone who's downloaded um, episode 50, our Top 50 Games Part 2. Um, I know there's going to be loads of games that people are going to go, how has this not made it? How has that not made it? Um, again, this I suppose it was quite a tough question really as well. Because you're thinking we want like just five games um it all depends on who's being asked as well because i know that uh alex uh crowley who's been on the show again a couple of times he was asking like i can't believe like none of the arcade classics made it just for example you know your donkey kong your um asteroid space invaders things like that and a couple of these games you know did get a few votes but obviously not enough to actually make it we're talking like just a handful even though obviously they are classics i think what it comes down to is like I say, who's voting and stuff like that. Because again, as a podcaster now, uh, most of our stuff, I'd just probably say covers, we'll say like, you know, late 80s up to now type thing, you know, covering like a 30 year period. Um, then, I don't know if that's not to say though, we won't cover, you know, um, earlier stuff, uh, you know, like especially some classic uh, arcade games and things like that. But, I think it's safe to say that it's a uh, 10 pence arcade over here. Kings at doing that one, definitely. Um, but again, you know, we hope that you obviously enjoyed it. It did take a lot of work. Um, I'd be very surprised if it did a top 100 um, when it gets around to uh, episode 100. But who knows, we might do something like a bit of a right to reply, you know, episode uh, a little bit down the line, you know. But we've got quite a few ideas um, that we want to start working on now, you know, and uh, just touch a few things that we've not really touched upon before on the show uh, I know we've said it a couple of times but like original Xbox definitely is something I want to talk about you know just as a bit of a um, sneak peek there to um, you know one of the possible upcoming topics um, 
the other thing that I just wanted to finish on really was basically uh, the story, I think it was on, it was either Thursday, Friday last week um, about Mike Ashley, um, you know, Newcastle owner banging into game. Now, game obviously um, are always up and down, you know, in regards to uh, share prices and things like that. And a couple of years ago, after they almost went under, well, they did really go under in 2012 before having to be bought um of the invested, I can't remember exactly what happened five years ago. Um, now, a couple of years on, obviously, it became sort of bounced back, did really well, high share price, everything like that. Thinking, brilliant, this is it, it's uh, going to be a non stop from now on, you know, think how much money we can make, yay. Probably not thinking it's not always going to happen like that because even in these last few years, gaming's changing quite a lot, you know, we've said it on the show. Um, with this generation, you know, with, uh, with PS4 and Xbox One, there seems to be a lot more emphasis on digital gaming more than physical. Um, I would probably say most people have got more digital games uh, on, you know, current consoles and physical now. Um, I think with less choice on a high street as well, that's something. I know like Kitchen, we don't really do games anymore. Uh, I know this is just game. Um, Places like Asda and Tesco, they still obviously sell games, but not as many as they used to, at least, you know, going back, what, eight, maybe nine years ago. You know, I remember those times like when I worked at HMV and when the big titles came out, you know, your Call of Duty, your FIFAs, they would be selling it as such a, you know, money loss, you know, but we put them out like 30 quid just so obviously everyone would go there. Uh, rather than to the big retailers, so that's something else that they've obviously changed, you know, over the years. And like when you go to Tesco and Avedon, it seems to be like a few quid difference. I know it's like, you know, five is five, but it's not like enough to drag everyone to there, you know. I think but nowadays people just go, right, it's convenience. Um, the way we watch films has changed and everything like that. So I suppose it's more now of that entertainment hub um, in your front room. I know, granted, you can get... Um, some special editions and stuff and that's what's taken me on to the next part of the discussion now when i've been into game um recently the last time was to pre-order the snes mini um now game share price has gone up a little bit because of i know i'm jumping around because of a mic actually uh buying it i've just had a quick look it was about 19 pence it's now 25 i think it was so what will i do to actually revive it now Back to what I started saying about 20 seconds ago. Um, there's a big sign outside game and they've got like exclusive only at game. Okay, so let's, you know, have a quick look. You know, is it like exclusive games? They're exclusive to game for some titles are physically exclusive. So I can't remember what it's called. It was something like something even. Um, it's, it's names escaping me. If it's really bad research, I'm sorry. Um, but it's like a horror type game uh, that I think is 30 quid on PlayStation Store and 30 quid in game. And it says it's the only way you can get it um, physically. Okay, great. Now, we're never gonna get like that exclusive, say with Uncharted. Um, you know, the next Uncharted game and things like that. So you think, well, you know, so what? You know, it's a game no one's really that bothered about. Um, the other exclusives, um, now this one could be a bit more of an exclusive. I've not clicked on it. It says like Assassin's Creed, the new one in October. But when I clicked on um, Wolfenstein 2, uh, of a new blood 2, whatever it is, and that's how, again, in October, it's like saying exclusive only at game. But it's not relating to just a standalone game. It's on, it's, it's on about, you know, the uh, special edition with the statue. Now, everyone knows that game have got um, probably the most expensive um, prices, you know, for, for a new release. You know, it's often like £50, sometimes £55. So a new release is absolutely ridiculous, especially that nowadays the price of games comes down so, so quick. Um, you always get these digital sales, which on um, PlayStation Store seem to renew every couple of weeks. You've got like a lot of indie games as well, so it's not like you're ever going to struggle to um, find something to play. Now, when I go into game, you have a lock and you're just like, no, 
Now, a statue isn't going to make me want to spend £90 on a new release game. It just isn't. Even if it's a game that I really, really like. For example, like, I love the Uncharted games, but if it was um, the new Uncharted game and it came with a statue of Nathan Drake, I don't know why, because I know it's not. Well, it might be in it, maybe somewhere. But, um, you know, like if you say it came with a Nathan Drake statue, I still would not pay £90 on a game. Um, you know, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I don't know what percentage of uh, people are actually going to go for that. Now, I remember at the start of the year, when they had issues with uh, Resident Evil 7, when that came out, because they cocked up on the pre-orders, there weren't enough. Some of them were absolutely battered. Some pre-orders were cancelled last minute. So things like that make you think, well, hang on a minute, I'm a diehard gamer uh, of a certain, you know, uh, franchise, say you want you know a special edition you would think twice you know especially now when you kind of look on say amazon as well where they may have a different special edition and stuff but for me personally i've never seen the attraction of these like you know statues and stuff i remember seeing like a massive skyrim one uh which came like a big box and stuff i mean what about you guys um have you like you know really really splashed out to get these special editions um of games you know like over the last 10 years um i suppose it's their way of going come on you can get this which you don't get if you buy it you know digitally but it's just the cost of them just decreases so quickly i just don't see the point personally but again i said that's just my view now just to round up the entire thing on this uh five minute chat about game um I've got get I've got mates who work there. I don't know what's you know gonna happen. I don't know what may need to happen because everyone just says like um, it's you know I don't know like style when you go in. You know it's just very lifeless. Uh, you seem to go into game just to kill a few minutes. Like I was over in Southport a few weeks ago. You know I had five minutes spare. You know nipping game just to have a look. But that's just it. It's just to have a look. Um, and I think when HMV got bought out in 2013, they had to redo everything. Um, and you feel like they've learned the lesson because they've not actually opened like loads of new stores. But they went, hang on, this doesn't work for us, get rid of it. This doesn't work for us, get rid of it. This does, like, you know, they may have got lucky, you know, with the vinyl boom uh, that's happened since 2013. Um, now, I don't know, like, what... Um, game will really need to do because again as we go more towards the digital at least on the gaming side at the moment i don't know maybe there is going to be that boom of uh, you know bringing something back in because they've tried stuff like the retro gaming which is a massive you know money maker if done right but then again suppose cex now i've got that market so um for, for me you know game buying up a competition, you know, I'm pretty sure that had to go through the monopolies and mergers. I'm sure it got investigated, but it got the go ahead and, you know, uh, rubber stamped that it was okay and it wasn't seen as buying up a competition because at that time you still had supermarkets, you still had like CEX and you probably still had, you know, like a few of your, not independents, but, you know, your very smaller chains, you know, your Granger Games or whatever, or I don't know if Chips is still going, you know, like those companies with like, say, a dozen stores. And now, They've just basically obviously got greedy and, you know, what can you do, really? Um, I just think it'd be everything would just have to just be changed, ripped out and just changed. Because like I said, so many people have gone in there and you just see um, expensive pre-owned games, which are about two quid less than the new price. So you're still asking like 40 quid for a pre-owned game, which is ridiculous. Um, you've got stuff like all the PC games where it's just like, take this card to the desk to go and get, you know, a code for your game. Well, what's the point? I may as well just sit at home and do that and not go out and spend either bus fare or petrol or train fare, whatever. Uh, plus, it's a lot easier. And then you don't also have to have all the stuff like going to, if you got your rewards card, if you got your elite rewards card, you want to protect your game. Well, I don't know, it was moving into that digital thing. We can't keep asking, do you want to pay a quid to protect your disc? Because basically it's a piece of paper now, just, you know, with a code written on it. Um, and again, you just got like so many bloody things like Amiibos and, you know, it's, they must have just wept when Skylanders and the Disney type little figures, you know, started dying off. Um, but it just seems to be like a lot of, 
well, dead space in a way in, in the shop. Uh, but yeah, time will tell. Who knows? It could bounce back a bit. I don't think it will bounce back enough. You know, I think that they always say, oh, blame it on Nintendo as well. So this is the last thing. I know it's turned a massive, massive rant over it. But I think, um, oh, if Nintendo did more Switches and stuff, then fantastic. Uh, we'd be making more money. Well, okay, would you? Because I've just had a quick look on it again. <laughs> games website so i'm looking at splatoon 2 now splatoon 2 is a game that you think all right fun game let's get involved and stuff like that i know i'll pre-order it from game okay well that's about 485 pounds then because basically they're putting their own bundles together uh, so it's like splatoon 2 with mario kart 8 and something else you know like an extra controller if that and we're just like 485 pounds now it would be funny but people don't want to spend that much money all at once you know we're going back to like the days of uh, ironically again like a game with um you know um the ps1 back in 1996 i think about 350 quid was spent on that ps1 you know with two made a loaded a couple other things and nowadays you think oh brilliant um the uh switch is in game i'm gonna go along oh can i buy a switch please no i want to sign it with splatoon 2 Zelda and also not just Zelda you've also got to get the expansion packs that's another 18 quid so what are you saving anything I don't think you are I don't even think we're rounding it down like when we used to do bundles at H&V it just used to be you know like you get like oh sod it we use uh, um, Wii with like Mario Kart steering wheel and something else you probably save like anything between a tenner to about 40 quid and I don't even think we do that anymore because I remember seeing a bundle recently um, and you tot it all up and you might save like a quid or two, you know, not really with it. And that's why when I see on Facebook discussion groups, a lot more people go to say Smith's Toy Shop as well. Because you're not getting like all the, do you want to pay a quid to cover your disc? Do you want this? Do you want that? Almost £500 is a lot of money to spend on a games console. You know, it's forcing you to have all this stuff with it. It's not giving you as a consumer the choice. Yet again, they're going at it that angle, which they're going... We're telling you what you want. And it's like, no, that's what's put so many people off game. You know, um, it should just be a case of listening to the customer, you know, um, and just just going in that direction. You know, we always say the customer's always right. I've worked in retail enough, so I've heard that a lot. And I think with this, the customer would help them a lot on this. But I don't think we're ever going to listen. We're just, again, still expecting that. Uh, gravy train to come along again and I just think this generation it's just proved that game has changed so much and I can only see it going more and more away from the physical at least you know for for a bit longer you know especially as like so many indie games are download only and these are some of the must own titles so again you know it's not like you can go to a shop to just buy it anyway um that's it for me. I've just got to also say as well. Um, I'll have to just quickly get out of it. Um, can't really see it all, but that's a thank you to uh, Lee, uh, my mate, for giving me uh, a much comfier chair um, that I was used to before. And I feel like I'm sat in a mastermind chair, especially subject of ooh, uh, super play. Um, anyway, uh, and also a footstool, which uh, is now uh, a magazine holder. I really need to tidy in here. Anyway. That's all from me. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment. Again, tell us about your um, special editions and did you go for something with a statue or God knows what, you know. Anyway, speak to you soon and uh, keep uh, listening to the show. Cheers. See you guys. Bye.